didn't know too much about Unite Union or what was involved in terms of further learning when you're in employment full time. Only completed my apprenticeship in August last year. I've always wanted to do a degree and I didn't think I would ever get the chance to do that and when I had spoken to Brian I realised this is a perfect opportunity for me to, to get a degree. Well the degree programme is giving people an opportunity to do further learning that they might not have had before. There's a lot of home university courses, the business helps provide some funding uh, with also the aid of the SDUC. The learning fund from the Scottish Union Learning is so important to what we do here. It enables us to give further education to people that want this opportunity that didn't get it at one point in their lives. It's a match funding with Rolls Royce and a small contribution by the student themselves. The degree programme is a great example of how a union and a company can actually work together to benefit the members and the staff. About 12 years ago I started the subsession as the ULR and six years ago as I took over as the lead ULR on site. It says leadership that's driven the programme. We had someone else in charge who retired for the company and so it was either the, the programme was just going to stall or it needed to be picked up and ran me and Brian did that. Brian's done fantastic. He's completed his degree. He's also the head ULR that we've got on site. He, he definitely deserves it, the hard work he's put in. It's surreal because it's just a job I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't see it as something that would be recognised. The equality and diversity agenda is hugely important to the university. It's one that it takes very seriously. Sharon helps champion that and has really worked with us on um, making sure that we are a, a diverse community. I said if I was off sick for two weeks with a flu, I was on sick leave. If I was off for two weeks related to one of my disabilities, that was disability leave. So a couple of years ago, we were approaching Disability History Month. I approached Pam Milner, Director of HR, established a workshop. We advertised it to our respective networks. It was a very successful session. Sharon provides a really valuable insight and developed a specific policy and has held workshops to support the changes that we've made um, in that area. Our Head of Equality, Helen Carr, came up from London. She was very supportive of that initiative. That's been a really important piece of work for the university that has been much appreciated and really successful. That opportunity to discuss what is the trade union view, what is the HR view, and bring them some closer together, making the words and the policy come to life. I personally am absolutely delighted um, for Sharon to have this recognition from the STUC, so well deserved. Change is stressful for people, but when it's been forced through with redundancies at the same time as new technology coming in, it's, uh, it's a recipe for uh, disaster. Health and safety issues and stress levels are the main things that basically tie us all together. My role as an equalities officer is to look at changes within industry, the changes in working patterns, working hours. You know, working in the newspaper industry can be very stressful. You've got half the amount of journalists working in newspapers as there were 20 odd years ago. This is exacerbated by continuing rounds of redundancies, so there are fewer and fewer people. And I think a lot of the stress comes from the fact that people were feeling like they had absolutely no, no control, no power which ended up with us carrying out a health and safety stress survey using the HSE toolkit. We modified that and that got a fantastic response. We've produced NEJ campaigns against workplace stress on their mental health and mental illness. I would say that the, the guys here have really taken on board the whole, the whole issue of health and safety as an industrial strategy. They wanted to have somewhere where they could, they could articulate their frustrations with the system and come up with positive suggestions about how they could be better trained and how they could use the tools they've been given in a more efficient and ultimately more healthy fashion. Things were rolling very, very quickly. Round of redundancies, second round of redundancies, after we'd got the okay, two weeks we were getting a letter that we were now on our notice again. Send one breath, good for fit for future. The next breath says, by the way, we're taking 10, 12,000 pounds off you. But it's just, did it seem right now? Why are you telling us one thing and then doing another? We put ourselves forward at the time as a work group, rep. I think it made us stronger because we had the backing of the people that was there. Once it started getting a little bit dirtier, we moved in as a main Unite representative. Within a period of about six to eight weeks, 
we had 10 shop stewards and our membership increased to 250 members. Down to them organising, speaking to people offshore and actually getting them involved and getting them active. But because of enough was enough, which was a statement that we made from day one, we stuck together. First of all, it was just communications via telephone. We got to know each other through more social media side, but the key point was actually going to meetings and seeing each other face to face. It's always been an issue with offshore organising because you're, you are you're so separated. I don't think we were frightened about like the Shell or any of the big oil companies. We wouldn't identify ourselves as leaders and try and say we are the leaders as such. I think certainly it gave the boys a voice that they might not have had if we weren't in that position. Done the first initial vote where we rejected the offer, they came back with another offer, we rejected that. Compared to what we'd been offered first and what we accepted, the, the difference was drastic. The thing is, these actual members that became shop stewards, they were willing to put themselves at risk to actually do this. I think this is an inspiration to anybody else that you can become a shop steward and we have had more people become shop stewards as a direct result of this.